A very busy summer has just come to an end with the announcement of the first major LHC results at the summer conferences. It is these results on which we are going to focus today in our programme with our guests Christophe, Monica and Yves. We are going to talk about the Higgs boson, the standard model, but also supersymmetry and particles which seem to be in a bit of a hurry. François has prepared a lesson in less than one minute on dark matter for you, and Stéphane is going to take you on a journey somewhere inside CERN. So let's get started. François, Stéphane, are you joining me? Yes, I know we are now testing a new accelerating technology. We travel at about 0.0000003% of the speed of light, and we are approaching now the beam dump. We are just arriving. See you right away. Welcome, Francois. Welcome, Stefan. Hello, Anna. Welcome to all of you to this first edition of What's New at CERN. So hello Christophe, Monica, Yves, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. So you are all particle physicists working on the LHC experiments and the LHC has now been working for a year and a half at unprecedented energy levels. Your experiments have already accumulated vast amounts of data and were all eagerly awaiting the first discoveries. So this would be my first question to you Yves, um, what would a discovery look like? Say we were looking for the Higgs boson, how would physicists see the results? Well, seeing the Higgs boson is pretty much like looking at the fireworks in these very huge and complex detector. Actually, you can think of the proton in the machine as the rocket, and then the Higgs is the chemical compound. And then you see from the pattern and the evolution of the pattern in the sky, you can work out the composition, the chemical compounds. So we see, we see collisions of proton-proton collisions, and we see those events as they evolve in the detector. We construct those events and look for very characteristic pattern of the Higgs boson. But you don't actually see it? We don't see the Higgs, as we don't see the chemical compounds in the firework, but we do identify those very characteristic patterns. And what we're looking at is uh, for is some kind of accumulation, an abnormal accumulation of some very characteristic pattern over the uh, expected background. So this is how, at some point, we will see the Higgs boson emerge from the background. It's a beautiful image. And Monica, how can we be sure of the interpretation of these results? Well, the result must be uh, consistently seen in several uh, ways, in several distributions, uh, so the pattern must be coherent. One can use several methods uh, to measure the same thing and make sure that the results are consistent. And uh, one can even use the fact that there are several experiments, for example, in the case of ATLAS and CMS, and they can cross-check each other to uh, uh, reproduce uh, the result that one of them has seen. So it's reproduction in the sense of looking uh, for absolutely, coherence. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and Eve, you work on the CMS experiment, whose main quest is the search for the Higgs boson. Briefly, can you remind us why it's important that we that we find it? Well, the Higgs boson is necessary to preserve the beauty of the theory, the fundamental symmetries of the theory, and it also preserves the theory from going to collapse at the TeV scale, to go to make to make crazy prediction at the TeV scale, like predicting probabilities on, uh, larger than 100 percent for some collision processes. So we, this is the only known way to do that in an exact manner. Are you able to say whether or not it exists yet? We cannot say yet whether the Higgs boson exists. What we have done is we have uh, observed and reconstructed a number of events which have the characteristic pattern of an Higgs boson, but there are also similar kinds of events we expect from the background. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for more data now to see this accumulation which we hope to get, for instance, in some of the parameter space, let's say on the mass reconstruction of a specific object. And that is still lacking for the moment statistics, but we have excluded already a large fraction of the parameter space, the okay. unknown mass parameter, for instance, the mass of the Higgs, we have excluded a large uh, domain already. So we're, this is okay. very coming very close now. And what would the consequences be if we didn't find it? Well, if we don't find it, actually it's dramatic and very exciting, both dramatic and very exciting. It's dramatic because we lose that object which allows to preserve the theory. We also lose more than that because if the X does not exist, most likely the minimal, the most beautiful, let's say, version of supersymmetry are gone. So you lose the dark okay, matter but candidate. it's also exciting. Because it's exciting because the machine was precisely designed to, to probe the TeV scale where new physics must appear in order to preserve the theory in absence of the X boson. Okay, thank you very much. Another major area for research in the LHC is dark matter. Francois, I give you 60 seconds. Well, let's go. 
When we observe galaxies all around us, we notice that stars around them spin much faster than gravity laws would have predicted. It is as if galaxies were bathed in a massive halo of invisible matter. As this matter is invisible, we call it dark matter. What's impressive is that physicists estimate that this black matter represents 80% of the universe's matter. But even though several theories attempt to define what it is made of, it has never been observed or studied. It is only by indirect observation of its influence on galaxies that we are convinced it exists. Switching the light on will not be enough to see black matter then, but the LHC experiments may well shed light on its composition. So, Christophe, you work on the ATLAS experiment, which, like CMS, is looking for the Higgs boson, but also other particles, some of which are candidates for dark matter. Among these particles are supersymmetric particles. How can you find particles which are impossible to detect? Yes, that's right. So you've heard that supersymmetry, in particular the lighter supersymmetric particle, can be a uh, can good candidate for dark matter. So this particle is invisible because it doesn't leave any trace in our detector. So you can wonder how can we find it. The reason is that we know how much uh, the LHC puts as energy in the proton-proton collision. So by measuring the energy of all the outgoing particles, we can just account and see whether we measured everything what's being put in by the LHC. What we can see, if there was a dark matter particle, we would be missing some piece. So the dark matter particle would just be going away and taking something off. So by looking for this signature, we could, in principle, do it. So these supersymmetric particles are still hypothetical, and the team went to meet the, the famous sorry, theoretician John Ellis, who would tell us all about supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is a very beautiful theory that could help solve many of the problems left open by the standard model. Uh, it could help the Higgs do its job of giving particles their masses. Uh, it could help unify the fundamental interactions. It could provide the dark matter that astronomers want. And it plays an essential role in string theory. Wonderful theory, but no side of it so far. Uh, but so far, the experiments have only looked in a small part of the region where supersymmetry might be. Maybe it's somewhere outside that. We'll continue the search. Or maybe it's hiding and showing up in a way different from what we've expected, so we're also looking at that. If we don't find supersymmetric particles, then there's all sorts of uh, other ways, for example, of helping the Higgs do its job. Most of those predict many new additional particles, much like supersymmetry. So I believe that whether we discover supersymmetry or not, there is a potential for a rich new spectrum of particles to be discovered at the LHC. So Christophe, again, ATLAS featured highly in the uh, summer physics conferences. Other than the Higgs boson, what were the main results covered? I think what's interesting is that we can see a large number of experiments, both uh, at the LHC but of course outside, smaller experiments which are really closing down onto what might be lying around just outside what we're seeing right now. So we're exploring a lot of new ground, uh, especially thanks to the LHC, but also thanks to satellite experiments like Fermi or the Xenon. Both experiments allow to search for indirect and direct search of the dark matter. Okay. So I think uh, that's what's very exciting right now, and we see we're closing on to what's Closing next. in, and it's uh, clearly been an interesting agenda. Summer has indeed been busy for CERN, as I said. Francois, can you tell us more? Yes, this has been a very, very busy summer, Anna. Uh, end of August and early September, the Ars Electronica Digital Arts uh, Festival of Linz in Austria has started a partnership for three years uh, with CERN. That's in the frame of the new CERN cultural policy, which has been announced earlier this year. This festival, which was called Origin, was also the opportunity to launch the first open calls for the Collide at CERN Artists Residency Programme. So as the name uh, says, this uh, program allows artists to reside at CERN and to mix uh, with the CERN community and to integrate it. Uh, by the way, artists can still apply until the 31st of October. Uh, many artists seem very interested in getting closer to CERN and its, uh, its experiments. For example, earlier in uh, August, we had the visit from Alan Parsons, the founder of the Alan Parsons Project uh, Band. Uh, he came to CERN, he rerouted his tour uh, to visit CERN. It was very interesting. And soon uh, in October, uh, 
Uh, CERN will be collaborating with director David Lynch in a show called Mathematica. Uh, he will uh, set up in the Fondation Cartier as from 20, uh, 21st sorry, of October. Uh, then, uh, more recently, on the 23rd of September, CERN welcomed the Researchers' Night. It was an opportunity for, for about 200 uh, young students, aged from 13 to 18, to join CERN and join physicists in the LHC and the detectors control rooms, where the physicists could, could share their passion about uh, science and show their daily job. Uh, the parents were allowed to uh, enter a science cafe and ask many questions to the CERN staff and get uh, answers. This was part of a bigger project led by the European Commission. Uh, Researchers' Night was having uh, events in about 320 cities all around Europe. And then finally, on the 16th of September, CERN announced that Israel, which was already an observer of the CERN Council, uh, became an associate member state uh, of CERN. So this demonstrates the current ongoing uh, extension of CERN beyond the, the historical borders of Europe. Fantastic. Thank you very much, François. Monica, the LHCB experiment also featured highly on the summer conference's agendas. So LHCB studies the difference between matter and antimatter, studying the beauty cork or B cork. The results of the experiment are very impressive. Can you tell us more about it? Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, what I can say is that the experiment is performing very, very well, brilliant, brilliantly, I, I would even say. And uh, uh, it has already achieved uh, in many uh, channels, in many decay channels, a precision superior to, to that uh, of other competing, competitor experiments that have been running uh, for uh, you know, a very long time, and uh, this only after one year, essentially. And uh, in particular, uh, on some uh, rare decays, uh, which are in principle uh, uh, sensitive to new physics beyond the standard model, the accuracy that uh, LHCBs achieve is better than uh, what uh, uh, was known uh, and, uh, until, uh, until now. And um, uh, this is what uh, um, created a lot of excitement and, uh, during the summer, at so the summer conference. You referred to the standard model, which describes, among other things, the elementary particles which constitute yeah. matter. Is it still valid? Uh, yes, I mean, we are trying to shake it as much as we can at the LHC, but so far we uh, haven't uh, managed to break it, I'm afraid. Thank you. Time for a journey, Stefan. Where are you taking us? Yes, I'm going to teleport myself to a very special building here at CERN that hosts eminent physicists. Follow me. <laughs> I am at the top of building number 40, a building that was designed by a group of architects from Lausanne in Switzerland and that was built in the 90s. It was built to welcome many physicists coming from all around the world to CERN. In the daylight brought by the roof, right in the center of the building, a very nice cafeteria. Being circular, building 40 has the same shape as particle accelerators. It also symbolizes the openness and the confluence of scientists and ideas. On six stories, physics at all levels. Hundreds of desks, it's a beautiful think tank. Many meeting rooms. At this time, it's the Muon Analysis Task Force. Two levels underground with conference rooms. See you, Anna. Welcome back. Thank Stephane. you very much. I think I saw your offices there in this uh, building. Am I right? <laughs> yes, it's a nice place. Yeah. So, Stefan, media coverage of CERN is frequent. The latest big news on 23rd of September was this extraordinary claim that measurements have been made showing that particles may go faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for once, neutrinos that are untraceable particles uh, were visible to everybody. Uh, just to remind you, the experiment called OPERA in Italy measures neutrinos that are sent from CERN 732 kilometers away. The scientists in OPERA measured neutrinos flying a bit faster than light, which is impossible according to their relativity theory. They spent months trying to find where the flow was in their measurement, methods, uh, computation, experiments, uh, apparatus. They didn't find anything. So they decided to call for help and to call the rest of the world, the rest of the scientists of the world, to review their results. And this uh, call for help raised a huge wave in the press, and I have some figures with me. 
uh, for instance, there were thousands of uh, articles in the press, blogs. We had 150,000 visitors on the Sun's homepage the, the day it was announced. 122,000 connections to the web seminar that was given by Dario Auterio, the scientist who made these very odd measurements. And uh, as uh, Antonio Eraditato says, who is the spokesman of Opera, these measurements are very uncertain. We would like to be very prudent at the moment. We would like just to say that we made a measurement, this measurement is accurate, and therefore we would leave to the entire community, which is actually the goal of this seminar today, the, such a way that the, the whole community could tell us, give us interpretations or suggestions, and certainly one thing which is fundamental, redo the experiment in different conditions, different groups, different people, and hopefully to find the same result. Francois, you just told me that you have uh, also odd statistics, but from a other kind. Yeah, in fact, I've been told that there were that day uh, twice as many persons connecting to the CERN recruitment site, so we might have many new colleagues thanks to the neutrino. Great new colleagues. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so now some um, few press coverage, and uh, we'll start uh, with the BBC News who speaks of uh, speed of light results under scrutiny at CERN. The Economist published a very, very nice limerick. I will not read it uh, to you right now, but you can read it on their website. And to conclude with the New York Times, which uh, quotes a CERN blog called the Quantum Diaries, and the quote is like this, the only thing that was going faster than light was gossip. Thank you very much. So finally, what can we hope for in terms of major results by the end of the, this year, Eve? I think by the end of the, this year, we'll make a strong statement on the Higgs boson. We'll make a strong statement with some hints of observation by the combination of the ATLAS and CMS experiment, or quite strong evidence of the exclusion of the Higgs boson. And we probably will need some 2012 data to close the issue. LHCB is a precision experiment, so we will continue to make precise measurement and improve our accuracy and uh, uh, increase uh, the number of channels uh, that we are studying and uh, something uh, exotic may appear any time. Who knows? We hope. Christophe? Well, now we have uh, already recorded four times more data than we had already during the summer. So you can imagine we are, especially for supersymmetry, but maybe all other theories, we are, we are really uh, excited to look at this new data. There's plenty to look forward to. Thank you very much for being Thanks. with us today. Thank you, Stéphane. Thank you, François. Thank you for watching. If you want to see this program again, it will be available on CDS and YouTube. But I'll give you rendezvous, as we say in French, same time, same place next week.